Hey guys, this is Karthik. In this video, we'll be discussing the problem counting tilings from CSES. So I've already solved the problem beforehand. So what we will do is we'll go through the thought process I had while solving the problem. We'll look at the code that I wrote to solve it and we'll discuss uh, the code as well. So I'll give you a code walkthrough for sure. Overall, the idea is that the problem is not very hard, but understanding why your solution is efficient is the harder part over here. So I would say the time complexity analysis is comparatively harder. But of course, we will do it. So we'll be discussing that as well, surely. Let's start with the problem. Your task is to count the number of ways in which you can fill an n cross m grid, okay, using one cross two or two cross one tiles. So basically tiles like this or this. These are the tiles that you can use. Either basically a one cross uh, two tile, either you put it vertically or horizontally. And this is the grid that you wish to fill. Okay, you need to find out the number of ways in which you could fill this grid. The constraints are pretty interesting here, which help you solve the problem. You have this n rows and m columns. Okay, this is a grid. You would like to uh, use your tiles. Your tile is basically one cross two, put it either vertically or horizontally as you wish. And uh, the constraints here are interesting. The number of rows can be at most 10. Whereas the number of columns can be up to 1000. This thing here is pretty interesting to me. This constraint on the number of rows is kind of interesting and we'll see how that helps us. Okay. Now this input is very hard to explain but uh, I'll take a smaller input to help you out. Let's say you have a 2 cross 2 grid. Let's see what the answer for that should be. So for this 2 cross 2 grid, uh, let's see how you can actually fill this grid up. You can either fill it like this. So this is one way of filling the grid. Another way is this. So you can see there are two ways overall to fill this 2 cross 2 grid. I don't think there is any other way. No, these, this is, these are the only two possible ways. So if the input was 2 comma 2, your answer would be 2 because there are two ways to fill this grid. That's the idea of the problem. And since the number of ways could be very large, you should mod it uh, 10 power 9 plus 7. Okay. Let's see the solution now. Let's discuss about so this is your n cross m grid that you need to find out the number of ways in which you can fill it. So the first thing that came to my mind was that I'll try to fill this grid starting from the leftmost column till the rightmost column. So I'll go filling this column first, then the second column, then third column and so on till the mth column. So for filling the first column, I will see what are the number of way, ways in I could, I could fill the first column and then I will think about the remaining grid. Let's see about this position first. Okay, we are trying to break the problem into smaller and smaller things from grid to column, from column to one position. Now this position here, you can fill it in only two ways, no matter how, how many ways are there to fill the entire grid. To fill this position, there are just two ways. And those two ways are, one way is that you put in a tile like this, a tile of size one cross two put horizontally. And the other way is that you put in a tile vertically like this. There are no other ways, not at all, right? No matter what your grid looks like, that position would be covered by either this style or that style, right? So uh, for example, say, let me put this style in here. Next, uh, at this position, I can probably put in a vertical tile or a horizontal tile. I choose to put this one, but of course, the other possibilities are always there. And last one, now I do not have any option of covering this position using a vertical tile. So obviously I go for a horizontal one. Overall, I filled in my first column, but the side effect of filling the first column is that some of the positions of the second column are already filled. If this wasn't the case and if this was independent, then I could have defined my DP as DP of I as the number of ways to fill the columns to fill the columns from ith till m. Right. So I could have defined my DP as the what are the number of ways in which you can fill the column starting from the ith till the mth column. And then my final answer could have been DP of 1. <clears throat> the number of ways in which you could fill the column starting from the first till the mth column. But problem is that uh, when you are trying to find out DP of i, the ith column is not empty. Some of the positions are already filled, right? You need to keep track of those positions which already got filled due to the i minus 1th column. So it might happen that I'm trying to find out what are the number of ways of filling this portion of the grid, right? But some of the positions in here already got filled due to tiles placed tiles placed to cover the i minus 1th column, this one. 
right it might happen that let's say this one and this one already got placed so if i were to find a sub problem that is unique i would need to keep track of the tiles that are already filled in the leftmost column so basically if dp of ie then i need to think that the ieth column might have some tile uh, some positions already covered now which are those positions how do i keep track of those so overall if i mark these positions at 1 2 i'm marking these positions from 1 till n right so you will mark these positions starting from 1 so on till n and you will be like okay position i j k these positions already got filled due to filling of the i minus 1th column how do you keep track of those so overall you need to keep track of these integers this is a set of n natural numbers and the positions that will get filled will be a subset of these n natural numbers obviously taking you towards dynamic programming with bit masking a bit mask placed in there to tell you what are the positions already filled okay so i can uh, introduce a mask in my dp state i can say okay dp of i mask and the mask tells you that the ith column what positions are already filled mask will tell that to you so number of ways in which you could fill the column starting from the ith column till the mth column given that some positions are already filled okay given that some positions are already filled and those some positions are represented by this mask so if you are talking about the ith column and let's say that the jth bit of the mask is one this means that the jth position of the ith column is already filled due to a tile placed at the i minus one position uh, i minus one column and if the jth bit of the mask is zero then that would mean that okay the jth position is still yet is yet to be filled and it's empty okay that's the major idea and your final answer thinking this way your final answer is going to be number of ways in which you could fill the i th the column starting from the first column till the mth column given that no position of the first column is filled yet right because there was no column to the left of first column so the first column is entirely empty that's it this is your dp state and this is your final answer the only problem left with us to solve is uh, transitions how do you actually define dp of i mask in terms of other sub problems right a transition a recurrence let's think about that as well also guys uh, while i'm erasing all this make sure that you subscribe to this channel i have to say this in all the videos guys come on you're not subscribing that is a must if you want more free content okay so yeah let's think about this as the ith uh, column and let's say this one is filled okay let's say this one is filled and this one is also filled now what i'll do is i'll see i will basically generate all the ways of filling this ith column given that this one and this one are already filled these two positions are already filled i'll try out all the possibilities okay <clears throat> so i'll try out this possibility this is one of the possibilities in fact this is the only possibility given the condition of the ith column but if there were more ways of actually putting in tiles let's say this was also empty then i'll try out all the possible uh, ways of filling it and then i'll recur for the remaining subgrid so this is one way of filling this grid and another way would be to put in a tile in here right and then you can uh, fill this one like this this is the only way you can fill this position of the ith column so overall you can see that there are two ways of filling this ith column given the state of the column and you'll find out what are the number of ways in which you could fill the remaining grid that is the grid from the i minus one uh, i plus one column till the mth column given that the i plus one column one position is already filled this one okay so you'll go that way so overall idea is that generate all the possible masks that you can put in here at this column and for each and every mask recur for the remaining portion whatever is the answer you add it to your total ways that's it right so first of all find out what are the ways in which you could fill the ith column all the possible ways of filling the ith column find them out for each and every way see how many ways you can fill the columns from the i plus 1th till the mth add that to your answer and that will be your final solution if uh, you have any doubt in this statement of mine then i would say that you can probably rewind the video and see it or you can ask me in doubts 
but uh, after seeing the code this would be much much more clear and after that we'll analyze the time complexity why is this not giving me a TAE okay so let's move to the solution now this is your solution this portion is the code in here I just read N and M and I'll print the solution you can see that the answer comes out to be 781 which is in fact correct uh, and yeah so we can move to the actual solution now I am trying to fill all the columns starting from this call col till the mth column given the mask this tells that the these are the positions that are already filled for this particular column the base case is that I have filled the entire grid okay when you fill the entire grid correctly then the mth column would not have any grid like this no uh, would not have any tile like this so basically no tile should uh, overflow your grid right so there would not be any tile like this and that would mean that when you reach the m plus 1th column your mask would be 0 because no position in here would be filled nothing should overflow right so our base case is simple if mask equal to 0 if mask equal to 0 then return 1 this was a valid way the way you filled your grid that was a valid way return 1 but if some tile overflowed in the mth column then that was invalid that is basically illegal according to the question so return 0 in incorrect way this is your base case very simple next up is that if i've already solved the sub problem then return the answer to the sub problem don't do don't use much brain don't uh, evaluate it again next up is that okay I've, i don't know the answer yet so let's say mark answer to be zero and see what are all the possible ways in which you can fill this particular uh, column number col think about all the ways in which you could fill the column number col okay and find those ways this generate next mask i'll talk about it but the what it's overall doing is that it's trying to find out all the ways in which you could fill this particular column col right and next of that is that uh, this next mask represents that if you fill this column in a particular given way what would your next mask look like basically if you fill the ith column what would the i plus 1th column look like this next mask would represent that you solve the problem for finding the number of ways in which you could fill from column 1 uh, uh, from the i plus 1th column till the mth column given your next mask that means what does your i plus 1th column look like and you add that to your answer modulo mod that's it return it do this for all the possibilities how does the generate next masks work okay i'll explain this one how does this generate next masks work okay yeah let's say that this is the uh, i'm trying to find out starting from i plus i i get column till the mth column Okay, this is what I'm trying to evaluate for right now. And this is the state of the ith column. Okay, there is one uh, blockage in here. One, one position is already filled. I'll see what are the possibilities of masks being here. Okay, I'll see can I have a mask like this. Is it possible to have my mask like this? And similarly, overall, I'll uh, generate the correct possible next masks. How do I generate the correct possible next masks? It's simple. See, this position is empty. You can either put in a tile like this or you can put in a tile like this. So if you put in a tile like this, then one of the possible next masks could be one and then three empty positions. Okay, it's getting a bit messy, right? Let me... So if I put in a tile like this, then one of the possible masks could be one followed by three empty numbers. We don't know them yet, right? Then at this position, I am forced to put in a uh, put in a tile like this. So obviously a one, right? Next up, this position is filled. So this position is going to be empty no matter what you do. So a zero. And finally, this position I have only one choice. You put a tile like this. So this is going to be a one because this position got filled in here. This position is empty. This is a possible next mask. And I need to use that to evaluate my overall answer. Uh, let's see what are the other ways. Let me backtrack here. Okay, 
So another way could have been that I put in a tile like this. In that case, my next mask would look like zero, another zero, and another zero because this is going to be empty no matter what. And finally, this position, I there is no way uh, that I can fill this position using a vertical tile. So this will always be filled, so a one. So these are two possible next masks and these are the only two ways, right? And I'll try to find out what are the number of ways in which I could fill the remaining grid from the i plus one column till the mth column, given that my i th column looks like this, plus i th column till the i plus one th column till the mth column, given that my i plus one th column looks like this. That's the major idea, that's it. Uh, let me show you the generate marks function. I will not explain, but it's recursively doing what I explained. Uh, you can just go through it. Uh, this and etc. I'm checking whether the ith position is empty or not. Here I'm checking whether the ith position and the i plus one th position both are empty or not, so that I can put in a vertical tile. And again, ith position. That's it. Now, guys, the interesting part here is that why does my solution uh, not TLE? Why is it not bad? It should be bad, right? Because if you think about it, that the number of states here is 1000 into approximately 10 per 6 and into approximately 1000 again. So 10 per 6 states are already there. And also my transition time is again pretty bad. So if I think about it, my transition time would also be approximately 1000 if you think about it naively. And overall, my solution should be nearly 10.9 operations. But why does it not uh, fail? Why is it good instead of being very bad? The idea is that most of these masks that we're talking about are actually impossible to have. Most of the masks are impossible to have. Why is that so? So let's take an example. See, whenever you put in a vertical tile, right? Whenever you put in a vertical tile, the next mask or the next column in here, the next mask could never be a zero followed by one. It will always be a zero followed by a zero. So whenever you put in a vertical tile, then instead of one position of the mask, of the next mask, two positions got fixed. This means that zero one can never occur. No matter what you do, zero one can never occur. Similarly, a lot of other masks would never exist. And to mathematically close this thing, I'll put something in the comments if you want. I'll give you a, an exact mathematical proof of the exact number of worst case possible masks. But you can assume it to be approximately 100 possible masks. And same for the transition time. It will be much less than this actually. The number of masks and the transition time, the ways in which you could fill this ith column. Both of this is going to be much less than 100. If you want an exact mathematical number for that, you can let me know. I'll put a proof in the comments. But for now, you can assume it to be 100 into 100 into 1000, which is approximately 10 power 3, 5, 7. So it would be approximately 10 power 7 operations, which is pretty fast. So we are good. And that's it. So hopefully you like the video. Make sure that you like, share and subscribe. Bye.